Hello, this is Alvin. And Claudine. And we're realtors here in Palm Springs. And over the last three years, we've worked with many, many Canadians in helping them to purchase properties in our area. And during that time, we found that the questions that they ask are pretty similar. So here are five frequently asked questions that the Canadians have asked us uh, over the past three years. So Canadians pay more in property tax than other residents. No, they don't. In California, the average price, the average tax is 1.25% of the selling price of the property, the property tax. So Canadians are not going to pay more than that. And that's what they pay, and they are not taxed more than the Americans. Is there a sales tax on buying a property? No. I know that in Canada you do have the sales tax at the time you buy. In the U.S., in California, you do not have that tax. You pay taxes on the way out when you sell your property. And the, the tax you pay at that time is of a 3 and a third percent of the selling price of the property. But this is it. Are there still deals out there? Ha! Big question. What is a deal for you? And what do you say when it's a deal? It's for you and your perception. To A deal is to be able to buy your property for 20% or more of the, uh, under the listed price. This is not happening. The sellers have now brought their price to the uh, market price. And generally, the statistics will show now that the, uh, the selling price of the properties is about between 93 and 98 percent of the listing price. So those are the deals. So if I do not spend more than a few weeks per year in the area, what are the options for renting? Absolutely. This is what our area is for. We are a resort area. Our season starts end of December and ends end of April, first two weeks of May. During that time, if you do not use the, uh, your, your property more than a few weeks, then you can absolutely put it out in the pool for rent. Okay, now can Canadians get loans when buying property in the U.S.? I am sorry. I must say no. We tried more than once. The only the Canadians, the only way a Canadian can get a loan here against a property is if he has a, a U.S. if he has a credit established in the U.S. or if that same Canadian has uh, at least two years, he can show at least two years of uh, tax uh, 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 report in, in the states. But the best way to go is, in fact, to get an equity loan at home at a very good rate, I'm sure, and come and buy here in cash. It will be more exciting, as a matter of fact, when you present an offer, an all-cash offer, you'll get more attention from the seller. Of course, you can call me or email us to get deeper into some answers. The main question is, we always speak about escrow. What is an escrow? Escrow is a third-party entity that we use in lieu of an attorney. Uh, this is an organization that is, uh, uh, has no familiarity with either the buyer or the seller and is able to deal with all the monies and all the paperwork. So this is what we say when we go into escrow. This is just an organization who works with us to close the deal. Should I buy a condo versus a single family home? Well now, a condo to Canadians uh, might be called a villa to you, or it might be called a cottage to you. Now, a condo is traditionally a, uh, a one-level uh, property with uh, two, one, two, or three bedrooms in it. Uh, it's in a community in which you've got uh, uh, amenities. Uh, you're usually attached by at least one wall. Pools, tennis. Uh, there's pools, tennis, uh, uh, um, golf, you name it, the, the, all the amenities that you would want in, in a, a t type of a community. Next is a... How, and, and how do you pay for all those amenities? Well, all those amenities are paid for through a homeowner's association, and the homeowner's association dues 
are uh, vary between communities. Uh, normally, what's included in those communities are in, in the homeowners association dues are uh, um, your maintenance, your structure, uh, the 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 grounds, the gates, the roof, uh, cable, water, uh, trash. <coughs> excuse me, those sorts of things. So. Now, in a single-family residence, traditionally, you would pay for everything that had to do with your property. Where there, if there were an HOA, it would mean you were in a community where you were paying for the gate guard or the gate that sort of thing. But otherwise, a single-family home is your responsibility. Do you do you have a? Are you saying that single-family homes could also be in? In communities called country clubs, then you have also all the amenities? You have both available to you here in Palm Springs area. Uh, you can get a single family home or a condo in a gated community, and you can get them outside of a gated community. So you've got quite a few options here, and it's really how you want to, what you would really like for your particular purpose. So to answer my question, should I buy a condo or should I buy a single family home? Well, Really, whether or not you buy a condo or a single-family home is up to you. Uh, however, if you're considering renting for a portion of the season, whereas you're only here for two or three weeks and you want to uh, gain some income from the property, I would seriously consider getting a condominium versus a single-family residence. This way, you're in a community where there are amenities and, and it's a resort. What costs are involved when purchasing at the time of purchase of a property? Okay, the cost to you as the buyer is about 1% of the sales price, and that's going to include uh, your inspection, uh, that's going to include your escrow fees, uh, transaction coordination fees, uh, uh, proration of uh, homeowners association, proration of taxes. The HOAs, the Homeowners Association budgets and reserves, are they readily available for me to review when I buy? At, at before, I mean, at the time I buy? Well, actually, after you enter into the escrow process, escrow will order the Homeowners Association uh, documents for you and then send them to you. But you must be in the escrow process before this happens. Now, big question. Is there any advantage in buying a foreclosed property compared to a regular sale, what we call here an equity sale? Actually, getting a foreclosed property versus an equity property where you're dealing with a homeowner is about the same process. Uh, both the banks and the sellers are uh, valuing the homes at the market value today. And you'll find in the statistics that the List price to sales price percentage of those homes that have sold is between 92 and 98 uh, percent. The difference is in a foreclosed property, you are dealing with a bank, and sometimes there's a few more difficulties with doing that. But it's certainly a way to go. Why should I buy in Palm Springs instead of buying in other places, in Arizona, in Florida, in anywhere else? Well, if I want to make an investment. Well, I would say that I came here from the coast and I found that coming to Palm Springs was fun for me. Uh, it was quiet, the, there's light traffic, there's sun, uh, there's restaurants, there's uh, community, there's entertainment, uh, there's hiking, there's biking, um, all the things that I like to do uh, and to vacation just to enjoy myself and, and uh, relax. Uh, we're not a big city. We're a small community, and I enjoy that versus being in a big city environment for my vacation. And I would recommend uh, being here for that. Plus, uh, we're a good investment. People come here to Palm Springs because they're able to. This is a second home community, and it's a good investment opportunity. 
And what I'm saying is I do hope that we have uh, given you some insight on buying in, in Palm Springs and getting you more into the wheel of coming here and visit us. So I hope that Alvin and myself are giving you enough insight. Please feel free to contact us. Right on this page of the video, you'll have the direct link to our emails, whether it's for Alvin or for myself. So thank you and see you in Palm Springs. Have a great one. Bye-bye.